So let's look a little bit about at what makes binary search so efficient. In particular, why does it work so much well than so much better? So much well, so much well, it works so much well. It works so much better than linear search. So let's create a little array here uh, and let's put maybe eight values in this array. I'm gonna try to draw it in a nice way so that we can read it and everything. Okay, and then I'll put some numbers in here. These are just sort of random data. I'll put a four over there, a six, a negative one, a 13, an eight, and a nine. Okay, so now here's my data. And you can see right now, this data is unordered. And so, you know, here's part of the problem. So imagine that I'm going, I'm walking through this array, right? And, and to simulate this, I'm gonna kind of cover up part of it, right? So the first value I see is one. Now, do I have any idea what the next value is going to be? No, I don't. And so the only way to find a value, let's say I'm looking for the value eight, right? So I start at the beginning and then I have to look at the next value. Okay, it's a five, still not an eight. What do I do? I keep going, look at the next value. It's a nine, still not an eight, keep going. Six, still not an eight, keep going. 13, still not an eight, keep going. Four, still not an eight. Negative one, still not an eight, eight. Finally, I found it. Now, if I was looking for something that wasn't in the array, like a two, right, I would have to do the same thing where I would end up going through all the values. Look at that incredible interactive animation there. Um, I would end up having to look through all the values, never finding the one that I'm looking for. Um, so how does a sorted array help? Okay, so now let me go through and, and uh, you know, uh, erase my data here and I'll put some new data in and I'm gonna sort the data that I'm put, gonna put in. And I could sort this in ascending order and I could sort it in descending order, it doesn't really matter. Um, but the idea is once the data is sorted, once I start maintaining a sorted array, I can use the fact that it's sorted to make my search a lot more efficient. Okay, so in this case, I'll put in some values and these are going, I'm gonna have these in sorted order. I'm kind of trying to choose random things. Um, okay, so now here's, here's the idea, right? Is that I know uh, I can make decisions based about where to look in the array based on the data that's in the array. Okay, so, so here's a, a classic way to approach this. Let me take a value, let's say I'm looking for the value three. Okay, so let me take a value that's right in the middle of the array. Now this array has eight values and so I could choose five or I could choose seven, let's just choose seven, okay? Now, I know because the array is sorted that all the values to the right of seven are bigger than seven is or equal to seven and all the values that are left of seven are smaller than seven. So when I start looking for a particular value, I can start making decisions about where to look in the array based on that value's relationship with the value that I just pulled. So for example, I look at seven first and I don't know what these other values are, right? So maybe the right way to do it is to kind of cover it up like this. So I look at value seven, right? And the question is, should I go left or should I go right? I know the array is sorted. And so the value I'm looking for in this case, three is to the left of seven because it's smaller than seven. So I just leave this part of the array alone. And for the purposes of this example, I'll just erase it, right? Because I don't care what's over here anymore because those values can't be three because they're bigger than seven, okay? So what do I have to look through? I have to look through an array. Originally I had eight values. Now I only have four left to look through, right? That's pretty great, okay? So in the first pass, I had eight values. Now I've made the problem half as small. I have four values left to look for. Okay, so I do the same thing. I pick four, right? And now again, same thing. Should I remove my right hand or my left hand? Well, three is less than four, so I know if it's in the array, it's gonna be in the left part of the array. And again, I can essentially remove these values. It's not four. Then I also know that it's not, um, it's not five, right? Because four, the, the values over there were bigger than, than, than four. And so now I've got two values left to look at. Now I essentially do the same thing. Now in this case, I picked two, okay? So now the right part of the array is empty at this point. I know that if three was in the array, it would have to be in the right part. It'd have to be to the right of two, but because there's no more values to look through, I'm done. Three is not in the array. 
And so you'll see that essentially, and, and you know, this, I, I could actually, at some point I get down to one or, or zero values left to look at because I either find the value or I don't, right? But the idea is that the sorted nature of the array allows me to zoom in. It allows me to make the problem a little bit smaller. So essentially the algorithm that we're gonna follow for our binary search on a sorted array is pick the value that's at the midpoint and compare it with the value that we're looking for that will tell us whether the value is to the left of that value or to the right. Now, it's possible that the two are equal, in which case we're done, right? At some point, if the value is in the array, we actually will get to the point where we do a comparison and the value that's at the midpoint is actually the value we're looking for, right? Um, but regardless, if it's not the value we're looking for, it still gives us really useful information, right? So one way to think about it is when I do a linear search on an unsorted array, Every value I look at really only tells me one piece of information, right? It, it, it only makes the problem, every time I look at a value, the problem is only getting one small. So if I start with n values and I look at the first value, now I've got n minus one to look at, and then n minus two and n minus three. And at some point, if I find the value, then I'm done, right? Because I can return true. But if I don't find the value, I have to look through all n values. And if the value is in the array, I still have to look through about n over two because I don't know where it is. With binary search on a sorted array, every value I look at allows me to make the problem half as large, right? I make, I, I make the problem small, and I make the problem smaller by a factor of two rather than just by one value. So if I start with n values, and I look at one value in a sorted array, I can reduce the problem to looking through n over two values. Then I look at one more value, I can reduce the problem to looking at n over four values, and then n over eight, and then n over 16, and eventually, Regardless of how big n is, that reduces down to one value. And so this is why binary search is O log n, because every time I look at a value, I divide the problem in half. Um, and that turns out to grow much, much, much faster, slower than O n. So you remember when we, when we did our, um, our comparisons of different um, run times, right? So O n looks like this, right? I mean, it's linear, right? So it goes up. You know, this is the this is the size of the problem, and this is the runtime. O log n looks like this. I mean, it is really, really much, much gentler than than O n in terms of its growth. It grows, it gets bigger, but think about it. If I have a if I have an array with a thousand values, linear search, I have to look at a thousand values. Log n search with uh, with log base two, I look at 10 values. If I have an array with a million items in it, O n is a million. O log n, base 2, 20. We're doing way better. So this is one of the reasons why sorting is so useful is that it allows us to build other algorithms that can achieve really, really excellent performance.